Hello and welcome to this special broadcast. We're joining you from Cape Town where the Mahindra Group has showcased its electric vehicle strategy for the future with a brand new electric identity and Infinity Loop logo which will be carried by all future electric vehicles from the Mahindra Group. You had an electric car that was showcased, an under wraps uh, BE05 electric SUV which will reach the markets by 2025, a tie-up with AR Rehman, all of that and much more. We caught up with Rajesh Jajurikar, Executive Director, Auto and Farm Division at the Mahindra Group. But before we go across to him, take a look at all these pictures uh, from the Mahindra event here in Cape Town. Mahindra Group has showcased the electric version of the Thar here in Cape Town. And who better to talk about it than the company's chief design officer, Pratap Bose. Pratap, thank you for joining us. Thank Tell you. us about uh, the inspiration, the kind of changes that we're going to see in the uh, electric car, possibly. So the inspiration behind the Thari is the Thar itself. Uh, you know, the love it gets, the iconic status it has. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we are at a point in the company where we are, we, you know, we are developing an electric all or bone electric portfolio and last year we showed two of the brands one is the xuv we showed two products on that and we did a new brand called b last year but still i feel you know for a company like us which is so we are we are what we are today because of you know the product we started making and the thar is so core to that mm. and i think you know our electric journey or our bone electric journey without at least a vision for a thar electric is incomplete so mm. it's actually to to you know sort of close that gap do something really special for mm. for 15th august as we always do right uh, is why we conceived the thari so uh, give us a sense about the styling behind it it has a more muscular design compared to the present thar i think bigger tires as well yeah you know uh, the inglo architecture has has certain differences from let's say an ice uh, based architecture and that's normal right because they're two fundamentally different uh, approaches to to the platform so this allows us to do bigger wheels because you know it has it can have a different turning circle radius very very uh, tight overhangs but what is important and what i really like that the design team have done is they've infused some intelligence into into mm. this it's mm. not just a styling exercise if you look at the lamps it's the same lamp used four times mm. if you look at the bu front bumper it's also the rear bumper mm. if you look at the side step it's also left and right mm. if you look at the the, the fenders mm. they're also so there's a larger story to this mm. you know in terms of investment in terms of inventory in terms of supply chain in terms of waste mm. you know so it's not just a let's say a style exercise in that sense we've been working and building on our electric strategy and as we've been we spoke a year back we are creating a product brand called b which has a very different mm. uh, design language uh, and then we have the xuv.e which is XUV.E8 and E9. And then, of course, we, we we're standing in front of a Thari.E. So, you know, we're going to create a wide portfolio of electric. As we thought about how we want to build the architecture for that, we felt that all our electrics need one unifying idea. How do we present ourselves to customers as a specialized electric brand in a way that people understand that, yes, we may be having a Thar in the ice world, but when a Thar comes in an electric world, there's a different identity and a different proposition. So Thar.E is one way, but we also felt that creating a you know specialized EV identity and a proposition will really help us communicate the Mahindra SUV EV proposition more clearly and precisely. So we started working on that and we you know said that this is really about customers wanting to make this leap and creating new possibilities for themselves in the way they experience cars, the way they experience life, the contribution to the planet, to society, all of that. And then, you know, we kind of in a classical English call that infinite possibilities. But then we started working with, uh, you know, Mr. A.R. Rehman and he's helping us create the brand. He's done the brand anthem, which we just heard. And uh, I was going to work on all the sonic 
music, more than 75 uh, sound uh, effects that will go into the vehicle. Uh, we came up with this line, or he actually came up with this line called Le Chalang. And in a way, that's a very, very more relatable expression of infinite possibilities. It's really urging the customer to make that big leap. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe that this new identity, which has circularity, all of that built into it, infinite possibilities, very well expressed with uh, the term Le Chalang. So it's being done in order to differentiate your current ICE portfolio from all future electric vehicles, including BE, and also the ICE platforms, which will be converted into electric. Uh, but they will all be on the Bon Electric platform, right. which is in Glow. So the platform for all of these brands, irrespective of whether it's XUV or Thari, is the Bon Electric platform called in Glow. Uh, I would also like to ask you, a lot of excitement about uh, the Thar. Thar is one of your hottest sellers. But what is the timeline for actually bringing this to the market? But Parish, first tell me, what do you think about this? I know you've seen some teasers and all of that. And, uh, you know, when you see it in, in real, in size, what, how do you feel? You know, it's definitely a very good-looking vehicle. But, of course, when it is launched in the market, that will be the real test. Yeah, yeah. So, we would definitely, it's not meant to be a concept which is to be just shown for fun. Uh, we will productionize it. We haven't put a date out yet. But it will come to life in, uh, you know, at an appropriate time. Right now, we have our hands full getting our first three, four EVs out. And, you know, as we get going on that journey, we'll definitely look at a timeline for this as well. So you're saying that it will be after the, the launch plan of the Bond Electric SUVs is complete by 2027? Uh, yeah, so it, it will definitely we will go with the sequence that we have right now, which is XUV8, E9, BO5, Rally. Uh, and then we will look at, you know, other newer products like this. But you know that uh, auto product development is a long process, so you have to start work mm. now to get something out in a few years. So we haven't put a timeline out, but it's something we certainly want to take to market. Okay, so I'll take it as after 2027. That is when pro probably... I, I, I leave that to your interpretation. Okay. Uh, I'd also like to ask you about the Bon Electric BE05 that you uh, showcased today in, in London last year, in August. You had said that it will hit the markets by October. 2025 uh, it's production ready uh, when does uh, uh, what what timeline could you give uh, to us any change in the timeline for the B0 we, we hold on to the timeline of 2025 uh, you know as we put out uh, we uh, you know we have uh, we are at a very advanced stage on tooling we have uh, some of the protos running on our tracks and you saw a video of that actually uh, which is the real product running on tracks and hitting speeds really rapidly 190 200 kilometers per hour it like zips so they're going to be really amazing products to drive and uh, they, they'll be out there by 2025 uh, what about uh, this fiscal are we going to look at more ev launches this fiscal in from the, the group in, no not in the year f24 uh, fi25 would be the next fi25 is uh, the end of fi25 is when you'll start seeing uh, the new ev portfolio okay, and hopefully the b05 will be the first uh, we have a schedule which right now says E8 will be the first, followed by E9 and then BO5. Okay. But uh, let's see how that goes. And what's the current state of your Chakan facility, which will manufacture electric vehicles? Will all electric vehicle production move there? Yeah, all electric, uh, all born electric uh, vehicles will be produced at Chakan. The XUV400 is uh, produced at Nasik and will stay there but all the new products are coming out of the Chakan plant. It's at a very advanced stage of readiness and we would be ready to start creating the first uh, proto-tooled-up vehicles out of the plant for the final stages of validation by middle of 2024. Okay. And what is the kind of uh, initial production capacity that you'll work with? Uh, we are, we are, it will come up in phases, but in a way by 2027, we would be ready to sell between 20 to 30 percent of our uh, SUVs total will be electric. Uh, so, you know, if it's at 30% level, then we'll be close to 200,000, but the capacity will come up in phases. Right. Now, you've got a major investment from Temasek. Now, you've got two major investors, British International Investments and Temasek. How does that position you right now? Till when do you think uh, this will serve you well? And uh, in terms of raising further investments and what would that investment go towards, what would be your outlook? Yeah, so, uh, you know, as we've said earlier, we don't want to dilute, uh, you know, too much. So, we've taken in investments, you know, and the valuation is very attractive, as you know, uh, uh, over $9 billion, uh, so, and the valuation has gone up by 15% over the last round to $9.8 billion. Uh, but we don't need more funds, and we don't want to dilute right now. 
so we will match you know fundraising either from Mahindra or investors in a phased manner to match the cash flows needed for what we're planning to do. Will you invest in more models, future products in ICE? 70% 70, 70 of uh, ICE is a big, uh, uh, you know, of our total volume being ICE is still a very big portfolio four or five years later. So yes, we would be investing on ICE uh, to keep our products fresh. No, we when don't need a new platform in ICE, but we would definitely be investing in upgrading our products. In terms of uh, ramping up production of your SUVs, this has been a target. Uh, you have a major order book, but uh, ramping up bookings has been an issue. How far are you from your target of ramping up bookings? Uh, you mean ramping up capacity, ramping I think. Up capacity. Yeah. So, Parishit, you know, we had put out a number of 39,000 as the current phase for our SUVs. Uh, in the month of July, we've got there. Uh, we produce close over 38,000, including what we've sold or produced for export market. So, we are very close to our 39,000 capacity at the moment. Uh, we will move to 49,000, which is at the end of this fiscal year in the last quarter. And then that's the next phase. Uh, so, you know, but uh, new bookings fortunately are coming in at a very good pace and uh, which which really means we've not been able to bring the order backlog down, which is not something we're happy with. So, you know, it's a kind of uh, situation of a dilemma because on the one hand, we're very happy that our products are getting the kind of reception that they are where new bookings are still coming in with the wait period. Uh, we haven't been able to bring down waiting period very substantially, but we have ramped up now very substantially. So, you know, when from a level of 18,000 a month, uh, 18, 20 months back, we're now at 36,000. Mm -hmm. And are the second largest volume brand and number one by revenue market share. So, it does mean we've ramped up a lot, but customers are really, I guess, loving what we are selling. So, demand continues to be robust. My final question. Uh any future partnerships that you're looking at in the technology space? You have a partnership with Volkswagen. You've got two major investors on board. Any kind of partnerships that Mahindra is looking at, you're possibly exploring? You know, today we also spoken about a partnership with Dolby and Harman Kardon. And uh, we believe that's a very important element in providing the right uh, human interface and uh, uh, experience, exp um, you know, the intuitive experience for customers because sound and music is such an important part of what people will want out of a vehicle. And both Dolby and uh, Harman Kardon are very strong brands which are, you know, cutting edge leader. So we would look at partnerships of that kind which, you know, allow us to deliver more value to our customers. Well, that was the electric vehicle strategy that Rajay Jajurikar was talking about. We're going to take a short break here on the show, but don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll speak about the Oja range of tractors which have been launched here in Cape Town by Mahindra Group and why would they be important for driving growth in the tractor segment. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Here in Cape Town, the Mahindra Group has launched the Oja range of lightweight tractors. Why are these important for the Mahindra Group, which has a 41% share in the tractor segment? They believe these lightweight tractors are very important for horticulture farmers, orchard farmers, farmers with small land parcels. And this tractor, they believe, could really drive the next phase of growth for the Mahindra Group in the farm segment. And they're not just targeting India, but uh, ASEAN, uh, UK, Europe and other markets as well. We caught up with Rajesh Jajurikar, the Executive Director, uh, Auto and Farm Division at the Mahindra Group to know more about the Oja tractor and the strategy for growth in the farm segment. We believe this event at Cape Town, we're calling it the Futurescape, is a milestone event because in a way it's making a statement about our strategy to go global. And uh, Oja in a manner of speaking is a key element of our strategy to go global. You know, the Indian market in tractors is intrinsically different from other parts of the world. Mm. The Indian market needs tractors which are heavy, uh, which are very durable, very robust, and uh, the global markets are different. There is a huge opportunity for lightweight tractors because that's the kind of application that's there in many parts of the world especially in horticulture and segments of that kind. In India too, that is now an evolving market. Uh, today, horticulture production is more than the production of grains that we know it to be. Uh, that presents a very good opportunity for us in India and globally, and OJA is a solution to that. Uh, we've conceptualized OJA across four platforms. So it's not just one product, it's four platforms, over 40 products uh, that are gonna come through. Today we've displayed three of the platforms and then we're going to be, you know, launching these in a phased manner around the world. But really Oja, which derives from the Sanskrit word Ojas, represents the powerhouse of energy. And uh, that's what the moment and sentiment is about today. Right. Uh, what's going to be the addressable market? Uh, you told us earlier that there would be three key markets, India, US and ASEAN that you would be targeting, uh, maybe 12 new countries that you would enter with the Oja tractor. How do you expect this to give a boost to your global presence? Yeah, so uh, we already have a good presence in North America, but the Oja portfolio is really going to strengthen that presence because it's going to bring new products and uh, very good technology consumers there. So in US, it's strengthening our presence. Uh, Japan, we already have a presence again and these products will strengthen our presence there. ASEAN is a market in which we have no presence, uh, especially Thailand is a very big market uh, and we will be looking at a market entry in Thailand in 2024, it's going to take us that much time to get ready and set up a network, so that's a new go-to market for us. Uh, so these become three key parts of our global strategy and then of course in India we will have a full, full product offering. Right. Uh, so when you speak about uh, Thailand and other markets that you would like to enter, which would be some of the key markets that the Mahindra Group would like to enter with its tractors, with its farm equipment in the next uh, three to five years? So the big one from a new market entry will be Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, as I said, key part of the ASEAN market. It's mm -hmm. a very strong over 100,000, um, I think 75,000 uh, tractor market. So it's a very good uh, opportunity for us to build a new base. Uh, so that's the one significant one. Apart from that would be, you know, of course, build on Turkey. Brazil is turning out to be a very strong market for us. Mexico, all of these will really be part of how we're going to build our global business. We're looking at Europe as well. Uh, Europe is a country in which we have no direct presence for our tractor business. So Europe will be a very good opportunity for a product like this. Right. Now, so speaking about exports, how much could this drive your exports on a monthly basis and also domestic sales? Yeah, so we, uh, Parish, normally don't get into a guidance on a you know specific right. number out of this. Uh, but for Oja, we are setting up a capacity for about 30,000 per annum. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, with time, you will get there as we open up different markets. But that's the kind of capacity we are setting up. Right. And uh, now in terms of uh, the global sales, uh, how do you think uh, you would finish on exports in FY24, uh, do you see strong growth as a result of the Oja tractor? Yeah, so, you know, a key market for Oja exports is going to be North America. That's going to happen around January uh, of 2024. 
so you, we're not going to see a mu too much of an effect of Oja in global. Like I said, ASEAN will be in 2024, mm -hmm. North America will be in early 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll really see the impact of that in F25, mm -hmm. uh, the Oja going global. Now, speaking about the larger tractor business, FI23 was a record year for the tractor industry at around 9.45 lakh units. Mahindra itself was over 4 lakh units uh, over there. How do you look at growth right now on a month-on-month -month basis, on a yearly basis? How, how do things look? Uh, so, you know, as you rightly said, last year was a, a very, very good year for the tractor industry. And for Mahindra, we've been gaining market share uh, over the last three years. So, we're doing in a very good position, both with brand Mahindra and Swaraj. Uh, last year's tractor industry sets a very high base as well. Uh, as we're getting into this financial year, Fortunately, the rains have come in and they've been much better than what we expected. Uh, we haven't seen any of the El Nino yet. Uh, the very big positive enabler is the terms of trade to farmers have improved and are positive now, which means their output price is better than the input price. And that's a very big change from the last two years. Uh, the Kharif sowing has started catching up and is reasonably okay. The last time stubby crop was very good. So there are multiple, uh, you know, positive enablers in rural and agri scenario right now in India. However, we're still staying with the low single digit growth because last year was a very high base. And sometimes coming from a very high base, you just need to give it a year or so to settle it. But let's let's watch and see how the year goes and we'll get a better feel at the end of the festival season. Right. So you're focusing, working with three tractor brands right now. Any plans of expansion in terms of uh, more acquisitions? in India or globally? You know, uh, like we've said, uh, Parikshit, uh, you know, uh, we are looking, we are in a growth strategy. Uh, we would want to expand more globally. Uh, that being said, we wouldn't want to do any reckless acquisition. We've done very well now with our global acquisitions. Our contractors are doing extremely well, very profitable. Brazil, we have a 100% owned company called Mind Brazil, which is doing very well and very profitable. Japan is doing well. So we're going to consolidate and build on these. But if we get a good opportunity around the world for an acquisition, we'd certainly be open. Uh, any plans to increase domestic capacity? You're, for example, you're targeting 30,000 annual capacity for OJA. Uh, to, is there any plan to maybe set up more capacity over the next so few So the 30,000 will come up at Zahirabad in Telangana, and mm -hmm. that's uh, already ready. Uh, we've already said we have a third Swaraj uh, plant, which will be ready to be commissioned any time now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that these are the two areas where we're adding. And my final question, you have been embarking on a strong electrification strategy, but when it comes to tractors, both heavyweight and lightweight tractors, what is the road to electrification that you see that you're ready for? What about use of biofuels over there? Is the market ready for such platforms? Uh, we, we are working on an electric uh, tractor and uh, we'll announce it at the appropriate time. But uh, the market right now for that is not small, uh, it's not large because as you, 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 know, you ride the tractor now, Tractor typically, as you see here too, is actually a prime mover for an implement behind. So you need a lot of torque. Mm. And uh, unless you're able to generate that torque in electric, the implement that you're moving is not going to be productive and effective. So we're working to find the right solutions for that, but we're definitely working on an electric tractor too. All right, Mr. Jijukar, thank you so much Pleasure for joining us, telling us about all uh, about the OJA tractor launch and why it's important for the Mahindra group. Thank you, Parikshit. Lovely being here.